C.S. Lewis said it this way. He said, joy is the serious business of heaven. So I've been thinking about that for a few years. Because when the joy of the Lord and joy of the Holy Ghost and you're praising and rejoicing, it looks silly sometimes. It may even look foolish. But he said, really, that joy is the serious business of heaven. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. All right, open your Bible, Romans 14, 17. Uh, this morning, we're going to look at several facets of the joy of the Lord. Several facets of the joy of the Lord and the importance of the joy of the Lord. So we'll just look at Romans 14, 17, and then we'll look at several other scriptures here. The joy of the Lord. And Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says, The kingdom of God... A lot of teaching on the kingdom of God and, and uh, good teaching. Uh, but here he says, he boils it down to three things. He says, the kingdom of God, not meat and drink, he said, but it is righteousness. So then he says, peace. And then he says, jaw in the Holy Ghost. So he says, the kingdom of God or the realm of God, the dominion of God, that when you step into the realm of God, nothing shall be impossible. The realm of God. One translation calls it the spirit dimension because God is a spirit. So the kingdom of God, the dominion of God, the realm of God, and he said, number one, righteousness. So that's an important part of the gospel that by the blood of Jesus you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Second thing is the peace of God. Amen. That means you're not upset and frustrated and irritated all the time, but the peace of God will guard your heart and guard your mind. The third thing here, he calls joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, there's not as much teaching on this part of it, joy in the Holy Ghost, but apparently it's a pretty significant part of the kingdom of God. Joy in the Holy Ghost. So what does that mean, joy in the Holy Ghost? Well, first of all, you got to know it's supernatural joy. Second thing is you got to know you cannot get a sad Holy Ghost. Because I grew up in church where every time people got filled with the Holy Spirit, they had to cry all the time. And I know sometimes they were crying happy, but you know what I mean. Sometimes they were whining. And I said, you know, you ought to have happy tongues sometimes when you pray in the Holy Ghost. So you can't get a sad Holy Ghost. And then the Bible calls the uh, anointing the oil of joy. So the anointing, the powerful anointing of the Holy Spirit, that anointing that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden, he calls that anointing the oil of joy. And David said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. So apparently that anointing is something that has to be renewed or being filled and filled again with the Holy Spirit. And he said, and when that happens, there's always a demonstration of joy. Always. With the Holy Ghost. There's always joy. Matter of fact, on the day of Pentecost, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, one of the things they said is, these guys are acting like they're drunk. So Peter had to get up and explain what happened. He said, they are not drunk, as you suppose. He said, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters, old men, young men, every nation, every language. God said, in the last days I will pour out my spirit. Actually, in the book of Acts 3, verse 19, then he says this. He said that times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. That means that the Holy Spirit being poured out in generation after generation, not just in your generation, but in, on your children and on your grandchildren. And he said there's times of refreshing, or I like to say it this way, waves of anointing or glory that come from the presence of the Lord. 
And I've seen those waves literally come across a whole auditorium with thousands of people and a wave of glory, a wave of refreshing so that there's new strength and new vision and you're ready to run. Come on and do what God's called you to do. He said times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. And I've seen those waves come across the whole congregation. People start praising God and start jumping, rejoicing, and magnifying the Lord. And I found out something about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing actually gets stronger when you respond to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you were teaching or preaching and you sensed the anointing was there, and you might be searching, you know, looking, and, and, and somebody that will respond or receive the anointing, it actually increases. Oh, that glory will increase sometimes like a wave that you could just get three feet from somebody or six feet from somebody, and they respond to that anointing away. Boom. Uh, you know, we just came. We're on our way to Nigeria next week, and I've seen 20, 30 rows of Nigerian believers who are quick to respond, get filled with the Holy Ghost, and 20, 30 rows go down like a wave. I never touch any of them. You talking about some rejoicing, they scared me, and I'm fearless. So I'm just telling you, I mean, they got to rejoicing and, and praising the Lord, amen? And so they're rejoicing and praising the Lord, and in that anointing, how it magnifies that it's, it's, it's the characteristic of the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God, that when you believe, receive, or respond to that anointing, it may, let's just say it may be a one or two or three, and it'll go to a six. Somebody else respond, it'll go to an eight. If you can get two or three at the same time receiving the anointing, whoop, it'll just magnify and multiply. Yes, yes. Amen. Now, in my, my life, my family, and my dad's church, my mother was always what we call a first responder. <laughs> I mean, I was hearing on the news talking about your first responders, you know, getting on the scene or something. And I said, you know, my mama was always a first responder. That means she just sensed a little bit of the word, come on, or the anointing, and immediately my mama's going to go, praise God, <laughs> glory to God, because she believed God's working in her case and in her life, and she's believed she receives that anointing. So immediately she responds, praise God, thank you, Jesus, glory to God. And she might shout, jump, she may take off running, and even if you think nothing's happening, when she responded to that anointing, yeah. Come on, somebody else, a couple of rows up, went, whoa, my God, I just, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, which is tangible power. Amen. 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 That means you can feel the anointing. Something will hit you from the top of your head, go down to your feet. Come on now. And that's a fire of the Holy Ghost. And immediately, shackles and chains just fall right off of you. In other words, there'll be a radical change. That means right now, here, this morning. A radical change. And no matter whatever you've been going through last week, come on, last year. In that joy in the Holy Ghost. Y'all still here? In that joy in the Holy Ghost. You're talking about singing and praising. Amen. You can even have a personality change. Look at somebody and say you might consider that. In other words, you are not stuck with the personality you got. People will start looking and say, they seem like a different person. Look at that. They got such joy now and such peace in their life. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Woo. So now let me give you some stuff here. You just write this down real quickly here. And I've told you this before, but Dad Hagen set me free from the fear of repetition, so I'm telling you again. <laughs> C.S. Lewis said it this way. He said, joy is the serious business of heaven. So I've been thinking about that for a few years. Because when the joy of the Lord and joy in the Holy Ghost and you're praising and rejoicing, it looks silly sometimes. may even look foolish. But he said, really, that joy is the serious business of heaven. All right, all right, all right. In other words, if you really take your situation serious, you're just going to have to get real happy. And what you're facing, everybody in the world may get that serious look on their face, but you operate just the opposite, and you start praising and laughing. Somebody say, what are you doing? You say, excuse me, I need to take care of some serious business right now. 
You don't know what I'm believing for. You don't know what I came out of. You don't know what I'm expecting. Y'all yeah. still here? So let me take care of some business right now because this is church here. This is the house of God. Come on, the presence of God is here, and I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to magnify the Lord. He is the one that brought me out of a horrible pit. He is the one that brought me out of the miry clay. He is the one that set my feet on a rock. He is the one that put a new song in my mouth. Excuse me while I rejoice and give him praise. Serious. Oh, I said serious business. Ha ha ha. 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 Ha ha ha
Celebration is a demonstration of your expectation. So, when Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Nobody had more adversity than the Apostle Paul. And yet at midnight, well, let's talk of this out of here. I said at midnight. Acts 16, 25, at midnight in the prison, come on, backs are bleeding, hands are bound in the deepest part of the dark midnight, come on now, embarrassed and ashamed, looked like they were defeated, but at midnight there's a sound that came out of that cell that it says they lifted their voices together and began to sing praises to God. Now, I always like to say it this way. I say, devil, you, you did a good job. You got me beat up, got me embarrassed, got my back beaten, got my hands bound, got my feet bound. Come on in the deep part. You did a good job. But, devil, you made one mistake. You should have taped my mouth shut. Because long as I can open my mouth and praise God and give glory to God, long as I can move my mouth. Hey, I said, as long as I can lift my voice, long as I can move my mouth. Come on, mountains have to move. Come on, things have to open up. Long as you can move your mouth. Thank you. Woo! Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord. Come on, this is the picture of serious business. That your celebration is a demonstration of your expectation, but your celebration is also a demonstration of your revelation. Amen. Amen. When you know what Jesus has done for you, your celebration is that his triumph and his victory is your victory. I love what I heard T.D. Jake say probably 10 or 15 years ago. He said, if you don't rejoice, the devil will think he's winning. You ought to rejoice just to let the devil know you ain't winning in my family, in my body, in my future, in my life. You ain't winning in this. Jesus is Lord. He's my redeemer. His blood has redeemed my life, and I'm going to get happy about it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Ha-ha. So Psalm 126, let me give you this verse. I got a whole study on this, but I'll just give you enough so you can study it yourself. Amen. Psalm 126. You ready? When the Lord turned again, whoo! When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like those that dreamed. Don't you love that verse? When the Lord, come on, man couldn't do it, nobody else could do it, but the Lord. When the Lord turned again, that means if he turned it once. Let's try that again. I said if he turned it once. Come on, if you can look back and say, I remember when the Lord turned that situation in my body, in my finances, and in my family. But listen, the devil will never challenge you over your last miracle. He's only going to challenge you over your next mirror. So the devil will say, yeah, you did get that last year, five years ago. Yeah, the Lord did that for you, but this time. Oh, let's try this time. I said this time. Come on, this is 2016. This time. Come on, this time, right here, right now, this people. Come on, not just the God of history. He is the God of today, right now, a very present help. The Lord turned again my captivity. That means if he turned it once, he can turn it again. I said he can turn it again. And he said, when the Lord turned again my captivity, he said, my mouth was filled with laughter. Ha-ha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. Laugh at the devil like this. 
Come on, he's underneath your feet. He's a defeated foe. Come on, Jesus stripped him and spoiled him. Come on, Jesus is Lord. Laugh. Somebody say, well, I don't feel like that. This has nothing to do with feelings right now. The feelings will show up later. Come on, this is an act of faith that I believe God. I receive the word of God. Glory to God. So I laugh. The Lord, come on now, turned again my captivity. It looked like a nightmare. It looked like a disaster. But now it's like a dream coming to pass that my Redeemer has turned my captivity. Fill my mouth with laughter. Come on, listen to me. The same place you cried, in the same place you moaned, in the same place you whined, in that same house, there'll be a sound of laughter in that house, a sound of joy in that house, a sound of victory in that house. Woo! Glory! Ha! Notice, he didn't even say that you can just smile. He didn't even say you can grin. People say, I'm pretty happy right now. <laughs> Listen, show us your teeth. I always say, oh, you're two. Uh, Listen, he said it wasn't just a grin. He said, my mouth, it was so good. I always say, Lord, I knew it was going to be good. I just didn't know it was going to be that good. I say, Lord, I knew you were good. I just didn't know you were that good. My mouth went, ha! Ha, ha! Come on, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Ha, ha! The joy of salvation. Joy in the Holy Ghost. The joy of the Lord. Come on now. Joy in his presence, his fullness of joy. Ha ha. Ha ha. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Do you want to know how to have victory in every area of your life? Do you want to learn how to rejoice no matter the circumstances you're going through? The Lord spoke these words to Pastor Mark Hankins. If you only knew what happens in the spirit when you rejoice, you would rejoice every day. Learn how faith lies at impossibilities with the book the secret power of joy. Mark and Trennis show believers how to bring the heavenly atmosphere of joy into the reality of their daily lives. You will see the relationship between the blood of Jesus and joy in the Holy Spirit. You'll also get as a bonus the three CD set, Are You a First Responder? In these messages, you will learn how God is looking for first responders people who are quick to believe him and respond to the Holy Spirit. Joy is the bridge between believing and receiving. Respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and rejoice. Watch God turn your life around. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and to be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your love seed will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. When you sow into someone's need, your needs are met. When you sow into someone's dream, your dreams will come to pass. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the book, The Secret Power of Joy, and the three CD set, Are You a First Responder? Please call 318-767-2001 
or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for tuning in today and listening to our message on joy, the secret power of joy. Do you know that if you have joy, you have strength? If you start to get sad and down and depressed and discouraged, you will lose your strength. But if you can stay in joy and determine to keep your joy, no matter what you're facing, you can be strong. And when you are strong, you can keep going and see the end of your faith. I encourage you today to get my dad's book, The Secret Power of joy. It teaches you how to use joy as a tool in your faith. So you can go to markhankins.org or call the number on the screen. Get this book. It will be a helper of your joy. Until next time, I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. Thank you for watching.